police department's non-emergency line. If this is an emergency, hang up and dial 911. To report a crime that is not in progress or for police assistance in a non-emergent matter, press 1. To reach 311 for city information on city services, press 2. To reach the jail for inmate information, push 3. Inmate information is available only at 720-913-3600. To reach the Records Bureau for the Police Department, push 4. Accident and offense reports and case numbers can only be obtained by dialing 720-913-6031. Ha llegado la línea del Departamento de la Policía. Uh, yes, hi there. Um, I had uh, been following and working with Internal Affairs and eventually the OIM uh, over an issue with the police officers on the street. Um, I got the letter back from the OIM and I uh, need to kind of talk with their supervisor now. Uh, who, I have to report another crime, basically. Um, this time, OIM has failed. So it's three levels deep. It's the Police on the streets have failed. The internal affairs I called, or the, their supervisor failed, and OIM okay. failed. And um, I briefly to spoke to someone earlier that said the only person left is maybe the chief of police. Um, if that's okay. if that's so, or um, basically who who can I report OIM um, policy violations to? Okay, so what is OIM? Uh, the Office of Independent Monitor. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't mind, I can place you on a hold and try to get that information for you. Uh, sure. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, okay I'm going to try contacting their office to see um, who the complaint would go to, okay? Absolutely. Thank you very, very much. All right. Thank you. Hang on mm -hmm. just a moment, okay? Sure. All right, sir, are you there? Uh, yep, still here. All right, so I've got two options for you, okay? Mm -hmm. You can try emailing, um, I believe, Nick Mitchell at oim at denvergov.org. Uh, just M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L? M-I-T-C-H-E-L, -L, Mitchell. Uh, okay. At oim at denvergov.org. 
okay? That's the first step. Or you can try contacting the Citizen Oversight Board, okay? And I'm trying, I, I don't have a phone number. Let me try to see if I can find one, okay? Uh, sure. Um, I, uh, I guess the last person I spoke to something about the chief was not necessarily correct. Uh, so when I asked, I spoke with an individual named Jerry. Um, I see, I'm, I've never been asked this question before, so this is kind of new to me. So I don't know the chain of command as far as, uh, you know, police, OIM, and, and all of that. I don't really know that um, because I'm not a police officer. Sure, so, no worries. So um, I called her specifically and I asked her. Um, she told me the Citizen Oversight Board, and I think after them it would be the mayor. Ah, uh, yes, the mayor was mentioned eventually in there. Uh, he's the top, so I know I know that much. Um, okay. But, uh, um, I mean, I guess... You can try COB, uh, the Citizen Oversight Board, and see if they would take it. Um, otherwise, I can get you the contact information for the chief of police as well. Yeah, um, we... Uh, we we think you should uh, know about this one. Yeah, it's a it's a very basic, uh, but it's a pretty big issue going on. Okay. Um, All right. Uh, let me take a look here. All right. Well, let me know when you're ready. Okay. Um. Let's see here. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay. What do you got? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. If not, just, you know, voicemails I can leave. All right, hang on just a moment, okay? Mm Mm-hmm. Thanks. Still in focus. Dispatch. Okay, sir, are you there? Uh huh, still here. So I just spoke with the chief of police office, and it looks like the OIM is who you would complain to, complain to against the chief of police. Um, so oh, no, I mean, um, we're not complaining, we're, we're not complaining about the chief uh, of police. Um, He's the one we're trying to report to. Right. So what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, okay. So you said you were trying to complain about the OIM. Is that correct? Um, or, yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, the person involved, um, uh, in, uh, Joe Montoya, Commander of Internal Affairs Bureau, basically, um, oh, there it is. Nope. Yep. Nate Furman, Deputy Monitor from the OIM. Yeah. So it is the OIM all the way up to them by now. Um. So, it, yes, I definitely did work, speak with the OIM, and um, if they're taking the same position as their um, people below them, that's that, that, that would be our complaint to the next chain right. Okay, so, so and, and again, I don't really know what's going on, but based on what you told me, it sounded like you wanted to complain about the OIM, okay? So what happened is I just called the chief of police. They said the OIM is who you would contact if you had a complaint on the chief. The chief does not... Uh, take care of OIM complaints. Does that make sense? Oh. So the uh, next gotcha. step would be the mayor. Oh, okay. So the chief just is okay. kind of a procedural thing. He just does his thing. 
Uh, I thought we reported eventually up to him. I thought he had the kind of power, but that kind of makes sense that the mayor would, after all this thought. So, um, okay, sure. Uh, uh, just contact the OIM again. Um, so you can, like I said, that's step number one, and contact Nick Mitchell, and maybe Nick Mitchell can, you know, do some further investigation on what's going on. I don't know Nick Mitchell's um, position there. Um, but again, they just throw out the Citizen Oversight Board, Citizen Oversight which Board. I don't really know what they would do, but their email address is cob at denvergov.org. C-O-B, uh, okay. Um, okay. All right, very good. Or, or I can give you the contact information for the mayor's office. Um, okay. Actually, that would be much appreciated, too. Absolutely. Okay. And again, I, I do apologize about the holds. What's happening here is, is um, I just need to get clearance. Our phone numbers usually indicate, you know, which phone numbers are for police only and for public. Yeah. Oh, so understandable. the numbers that I have here are labeled, so I have to manually dial them to make sure it's a number that I can give out to you, okay? Uh, sure. Um, okay, yeah. Yep, that works. Thank you. All right. Hang on just a moment. Sure. Thank you. Okay, sir, are you there? Uh, yep, still here. Okay, let me know when you're ready. I'm almost there. Let's see here. And this is the mayor? Um, it would be the mayor's office. Okay. Uh, okay. What do you got? It's 720. Uh-huh. 865-9000. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Okay. And I believe the call, the phone number does go through to uh, 311. <coughs> okay? Oh, okay. But that's just, that's just for tracking purposes, I believe, okay? Sure, no worries. All righty. Um, thank you. Uh, uh, hey, you're welcome. If you're curious, um, in one sentence I can sum up what our issue is. And I think oh, everybody seems, everybody should know this, period. Okay. Because, um, uh, uh, well, let's put it this way. Um, from your experience... Uh, civilians uh, can't go around detaining people like cops. Simple, simple premise, right? Okay. Uh, detaining people uh, with reasonable suspicion for investigations, because uh, like you know, any citizen can citizens arrest any other person, and then they have the liability there of being wrong and stuff like that. Versus just uh, when they see a straight up crime, if you saw an assault, any citizen right. can arrest them. Yeah, but if you just kind of see suspicious behavior. Uh, you're supposed to, uh, as a civilian, call the police because they have the power to detain and do investigation and so forth. Uh, right. Well, we happen to be at DU, and while it's open to the public, the library section there, uh, it's predominantly private property, and the Denver security guards are, um, or DU security guards are just their own little patrol there. Um, we were uh, stopped by them when we asked if they were cops. They said yes, and therefore we went down the path of feeling like we needed to be, um, or not, 
let go of. Um, we were detained under the premises that we thought it was a normal police officer doing a normal investigation. He ran our names. Uh, our names cleared. Like if we were to run away, like he would have the authority to tase or tackle us. Yeah, and like right. um, you know, he was like, uh, uh, you know, don't jump for your ID. Um, you know, get get it slowly. Everything. He also said do. to uh, don't reach into our pockets, and that's a that, cop only thing too. Yeah, that's what I was saying here. Oh. And so uh, essentially, um, we gave up our names. Uh, you know. Um, it was just an investigation. We just had some uh, bins uh, with our paperwork in it, leaving the library at, at at closing time. So it's not necessarily suspicious of anything statutable, um, or except for maybe theft. But in that case, you would go call the cops and something like that. If it's a policy violation or if there's something else, you know, if you gave them a formal warning, then, then tr- uh, uh, arrest them for trespassing is the only powers okay. they have. So. I know this is longer than a sentence, but in a nutshell, okay. Denver uh, or DU uh, security guards stopped us. We thought they were cops. And then once we got let go, we found out they were only security guards. And uh, basically, we don't give our names out to people unless we have to. And so we were uh, basically talking to them, and we found out that they have a policy that they've been doing, which is that they go around detaining people all the time. So we called the Denver police up to report this false imprisonment and impersonation, and they themselves said, um, yeah, we deal with these people all the time. We take their calls all the time, and, and there's nothing wrong here. And, and so they ratified that behavior, and then we called Internal Affairs, and then they ratified that behavior, and then the OIM ratified that behavior. And it's something so freaking simple. A security guard doesn't have a badge number to go around detaining people short of a citizen's arrest. We've okay. asked uh, other security guards and online, and it's all unanimous that they can't do that. Yeah, and okay. and police uh, outside of this jurisdiction, they're all unanimous too. Oh, yeah, um, cops too. Yeah, it's very simple. It's, it's the most black and white thing. Co- security guards are security guards because they're not cops. And, right. and so we reported that, and uh, everyone's telling us in the internal affairs and so forth, like, yeah, they had good cause to stop you, and, and, and things like, um, ready, uh, they, uh, it says uh, they're unsworn security guards uh, that perform police functions regarding crimes such as theft because it's a private college. Oh, wow. That's butchered. Yeah. So it's like, uh, it's just a, it's a slam dunk. It's really stupid. Uh, uh, my brother and I came from a, um, a background here in, uh, in the legal world of being falsely imprisoned um, by previous people and cops and stuff. And so we kind of got taught the law the hard way. <laughs> Right. And so when we caught this, we, it was just so black and white. Um, we went over all the variables, and it turns out that the cops and the police that night and so forth up the chains all um, have prob- probably been allowing this sort of policy to go on forever. Therefore, it looks like that's the normal route, and it looks like we're the exception that needs to be tossed. Out. Also, they had the ability to run our name through Denver Dispatch and uh, check for warrants without a cop present. Yeah, and then give us our ID back and clear us and everything. So we, we were we at least got through to someone up the chains on OIM that did mention the peculiarity of being able to run somebody's name without a cop present. Um, okay. So uh, that system shouldn't be in place. Um, but basically, a security guard is, you know, it's just like a Walmart security guard. If they have any problems, uh, they can call police to do investigations. Uh, if they and witness you, a crime, they can go you, detained. And you, and you said that you've spoken with a police officer about this, right? But it's all, you know... Uh, they're they're yeah, trying to done. downplay it and think that there's nothing there. We've been uh, tampered before. We call it flowers. Right. They want to make okay. it look pretty. Yeah, right. so we had uh, we actually called them out, the police, that night uh, while the security guards were still there. Uh, had They had just finished talking to us and letting us go. And so the, secu- the police there, um, we explained the whole story in front of the security guards. And um, all the different words came out. Basically, uh, the police... Uh, and we've seen this other, in other jurisdictions, have um, ratified different definitions of words. And so um, they don't think that what security guards are doing is, is is detaining in the same fashion that a police detains. They think that they have their own powers to detain, uh, stuff like that. Um, right. Keep, they keep referring to this unsworn officer of the law. And it's like, there's no such thing. <laughs> right. So... Uh, it, it's it's so basic that um, you know a conversation like you here might yield uh, some some truth. You might understand what we're talking about. Uh, I feel like maybe uh, when we tried to call the police up, um, we were too descriptive, and maybe we convoluted it to the point where they're like, "This must not be a case" or something. When it's really dead simple. Uh, security guards are civilians. They they don't have any special powers outside of what a civilian can do, which is as far as we can tell, a citizen's arrest. So right. So, um, 
But yeah, we're basically we're really concerned now because the uh, DA's office was meant um, was referenced in this by these okay. internal affairs people, and the DA said that there's no charges there or anything, and so we feel like there's basically a whole bunch of corruption and people not wanting to um, follow the law. Real we basic feel like law. we're being retaliated against. Yeah, and and kind of silenced and told, told to just shut up. You know when, right. when. When we have the the whole outside world, I mean, real quick, you go online, uh, security forums, uh, cop forums, every single one of them, um, manuals, training manuals, they all say that, you know, you can observe and report and, um, you know, citizens arrest if you observe a crime, but you can't actually go stopping people, uh, right. de- detaining them. And that's for everybody's safety. Uh, we can't, of course, encourage people to do that. Uh, you know, everything's just kind of worked around uh, liability these days. So we just yeah. want to make sure everybody's kept safe. So, I mean, if we went around telling people, yes, detain them, you know, that, I mean, we could be putting ourselves in a hole. So exactly. It would, exactly. Definitely, it would definitely make sense for us not to allow that kind of behavior because we don't want anybody getting hurt and, you know, et cetera. So, and police officers um, are trained, too. Yeah, so. they're much better trained. Um, and also, too, so. the length of detention is usually something that is um, very carefully um, uh, argued over in the case laws out there. And so naturally when you're arguing over um detention it's usually with a cop and so here you, the length of detention for a security guard boy that would not make it into the case law <laughs> that would be a false imprisonment <laughs> basically right. it's not even the same subject okay well but, but, but definitely uh i mean it, it sounds like you guys um might have a good argument again i don't really know much about all of that so um you know just keep yep. your head strong and well yeah it's um, a uh Thank you. It's uh, uh, we feel like it's pretty common law and um, uh, not really controversial. Uh, but since we happen to be people that are not cops, we're laymen or whatever. We're not um, uh, we're pro se attorneys, but we don't have you know bars numbers or anything. We feel like um, people that are claiming to be smarter than us or more um, in a privileged position retaliate against us because we happen to know more than them. It's really silly. <laughs> right. So. Um, but uh, real quick, just to give you ca- the kind of context um, that we're in, uh, in general, with regards to these types of things, the whole reason why we felt we got stopped was a kind of a profile, basically a, a bins versus like backpacks and stuff like that. And so we, we, we've noticed that there's a theme in police to kind of save money using profiles. Um, basically, you see the defendant and then you kind of maybe fill in the other elements later or something like that. And so, um, real quick, I just wanted to finish off with this really crazy concept. Basically, my brother and I have been on this sort of type of investigation for a while to the point where we're almost stinging cops. Uh, you know, she- secret shopping, them, uh, as to, you know, basically. And so, real quick, we were at a Walmart in Commerce City, and there's a Walmart policy on the books that is um, just them, uh, that if they um, ask for someone's receipt and they don't show it uh, on their way out, um, they- they're supposed to go look at the video camera footage and, and then maybe call the cops if they actually witness or see uh, shoplifting. And so, uh, but their problem is, is that their policy to um, ask everybody for a receipt is not necessarily documented. It's not well trained into people and things like that. And so we happen to have a, a police officer that was kind of hanging out near the exit, um, doing his own little thing, you know, just not even patrolling. But um, I walked past and an employee um, proceeded to ask me for my receipt and I, I kept walking. And then that's when the cop got involved and then the cop detained me and then started going down this silly profile path of asking me you know hey man you, we'll let you go if you just show the receipt and you know since i didn't i exercised my rights they were, they were like yeah right yeah you know i fought world wars for rights and stuff and then basically while he was detaining me um the employees went and uh, you know supposedly looked at some video footage um came back said that i had stolen it which i definitely did not i had a receipt with me um and then they went ahead and wrote the ticket and at the very end uh, i whipped out my receipt and reversed the whole thing <laughs> So we're used to this type of profiling where uh, people have a, 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 they don't have the correct definition of a fact or evidence or how to build a case correctly. And then they end up trying to hide it, end up lying on paper, submitting false uh, documents to basically cover up the situation so that they don't lose their jobs, their pension, their house. Pretty much over a, a, a rat of, uh, basically on their side, on, on, on the police's side, they have a lot of policies or let's say customs that kind of got ratified over the t- over the books, you know, um, okay. over time. And so we're just going around and unratifying all these concepts, um, you know, like uh, we, we call it a word word. And so to finish up, we'll say this. We've run into people like um, uh, city attorneys, uh, this one in uh, Northland um, or federal rights. 
um, uh, we were talking about a false imprisonment case against a cop who, you know, loses his trial. And the guy's like, well, you weren't arrested. You didn't go to jail. So there's no false imprisonment in there. And it's like, that's not how the definition of imprisonment actually works. It's you can be held in, in without against your will and not go to jail. And so, there, you know, it's still a charge in there. You, you, when you get moved physically, then it turns into like secondary kidnapping, stuff like that. But he thought, you know, since I didn't go to jail, it wasn't imprisonment. And so there's just a whole bunch of these things that, like, you know, people have ratified. Uh, the security guards have their own powers to detain because they have their own uh, property and stuff. So. Or that holding a cardboard sign is soliciting when it's uh, just holding a sign. It's just passively freedom of speech kind of thing. Uh, we, we got a fake ticket there, too. Someone ticketed us for a solicitation, and it was just holding a sign. <laughs> So, but we just wanted we just to share have this a with ton you. Of stories. Yeah, we just want to share this with you because you might be able to uh, dispatch better, um, things like that. Just kind of watch out for things. Uh, if you ever become a cop, uh, all we can say is go over your elements, and if nobody fits them, then you just kind of can't do anything about it. But always go over your elements. Oh man, and use maps. We've got cops not using maps either, and us being outside of their parks, and then us uh, being ticketed, and then using our maps in court. So it's kind of silly stuff. But, okay. but we're really uh, uh, we're, we're at least happy that um, on the flip side, while some of these policies are so obvious, if they people try and ratify them, you know, we have it plenty to report with. So, um, right. you know, we're just trying to go up the chains to find people that actually know what we're talking about. Um, we're really sorry for the trouble. Oh, no, um, you're fine. So. And the best of luck to the both of you. OK, uh, thank you. Uh, take care. Bye bye. All right. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.